Eugene Peterson, in his translation of Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, in the message, renders that passage into contemporary English, not 17th century English, under the heading, Discipline in a Long Race. And he translates it this way. Do you see what this means? <laughs> all these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we are in. Study how Jesus did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever, and now he is there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility that Jesus plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your soul. We know today about the Olympics. It's worldwide and it involves billions of dollars. But athletic games in Greece and in the Hellenic colonies were just as important in the first century as Baseball, football, and basketball are in the United States in the 21st century. If the Apostle Paul had been born in the 21st century and not in the 1st century, if Paul had been born in Tuscaloosa, not Tarsus, if he had been born in Cleveland and not Capernaum, Paul would have been glued to his television on Monday night when Ohio State put a whipping on <laughs> athletic picture that every reader and every hearer of Hebrews would have understood. He says, these runners who have finished this race are now up in the stands, pulling for us, cheering us on. And what I want to talk to you about for a little while on this King Breakfast Day is this. Look who's in us. I can spend a whole hour telling you about that. Just let me give you one instance, one instance, but when I was stationed in the Navy at the Great Lakes, Illinois, now I'm hiring you to young to understand this metaphor. It's not a metaphor, it's reality back then. My wife and I were stationed at Great Lakes and the rabbit died. Mm. I know you don't know what that means. Walgreens, they call it the EPT in terms of paper. When the rabbit died, that meant the girl was pregnant. <laughs> our first child, pregnant with our first child. We ran to the phone, Great Lakes, Illinois, called Philadelphia, where my parents live. I had to live in Philadelphia also. My mother answered the phone and said, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. She said, Settle down, calm down. Aunt Hattie already told us. <laughs> Harriet Tubman, yeah. looking to see if we're still trying to get free. Look who's in the stand. I had to be Wells, watching to see if we're still turning our backs on them. Look who's in the stand, W.E.B. Du Bois, watching to see if we've learned how to live together or if we're still circling the racist wagons with our silos. I don't know which is more painful, seeing millions seduced by a soundbite or seeing a ministry reduced to a soundbite. And I ain't talking about me, I'm talking about Martin Luther King. Martin's stand against militarism was reduced to a soundbite. Let freedom ring. <laughs> Martin's stand against racism was reduced to a soundbite. Oh, with yeah. patience, once again, point to the fact that this is a long distance race. Yeah, yeah. Peterson says they are anxiously waiting for us, not just watching and cheering us on, but they're invested in the race that we must run. They're waiting to use the Apostle Paul's words. They have finished their race. And now they are waiting for us as witnesses as we run our race. Look, look who's up in the stands. Rosa Parks is waiting on us. Malcolm X is waiting on us. Queen Yah Asantua is waiting on us. Jean-Jacques Dessalines is waiting on us. Marcus Mosiah Garvey is waiting on us. Bookman from Haiti is waiting on us. Adam Clayton Powell from Harlem is waiting. In case you get tired, in case you get weary, in case you get frustrated, in case you get down, look again up in those stands. Because there's also a winner. Not only watchers say watcher, 
Not only waiters say waiter, but also a winner. Look, Peter translates it this way. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished his race. Guess what the good news is? The race ain't over yet. Look up ahead. Look up in our lane. The good news is that this race does not depend solely on the church or the mosque. We're just running one leg of a race. Jesus is the finisher of our race. And he is the race.